Hello, I'm Jack Balvis with Oasis Digital, and today I'm going to talk a little bit about our work with integrating with the JIRA REST API. So JIRA has this wonderfully documented API, if I can get there, to a great many of different commands you can use to integrate your custom uh, web application with JIRA and adding items for things and moving them around. Uh, there's a slight problem with that, is that JIRA actually doesn't uh, serve the proper cores headers for uh, sending the commands directly from your web application. So uh, the way we solved that was using a proxy to send those commands. So you can see the straight path between your custom web app and your JIRA server is not available because of cores. So you just add in an extra step to get around that. So we have just very simple uh, proxy and PHP that we use to bounce the requests over from our custom application to JIRA. So what, are those, uh, uh, what does that look like? So for our application, what we, were, we were using our uh, JIRA to track incoming requests for our training classes. And so each inquiry became an item. And so what those look like for JIRA is something like this. So a very simple uh, item, there are some more fields that we added. So things like the summary and the issue types are straightforward in, in terms of naming. Um, so you can just use the same name that is used in JIRA. But you notice here, I've got this field, custom field 12,000. So um, if you are using any custom fields that you want to fill out, you have to actually go and you can use the JIRA uh, API itself to what? You can't read the screen. You can't. Oh, I thought you were just talking about it need to be louder. Okay. Uh, you're great. That's a good idea. Louder fonts. <laughs> All right. So back in. Start where you were going into the screen. David will edit. For you. Okay. <laughs> yes. Okay. Uh, so what does that look like? So here is a example of a uh, request to create an item for Jira. So you can see things like the summary and the issue type that are built into Jira are very easy to put in. However, I've got this custom field 12,000 here, which is not nearly as nice. Uh, so if you are using any kind of custom field with, oh, Mike's not motioning at me. Um, <laughs> so if you're using a custom field uh, you're going to have to actually use the API itself and kind of look through and find you, it will uh, inquire as to, okay, well, what is, I, I know the, na uh, the name of this field, so I can go and I can look, look up all the fields and I can find this big soup of things. Okay, here's the ID, and then use it to create these requests. Uh, and if you mess something up, uh, it actually does give you back some pretty nice errors. You can see here, uh, I put in a field that isn't actually real, and it actually said that you know this thing is what the problem is. So you need to go back and look at this. Um, so let's see. So yeah, and that is how we did it. So um, for yeah, questions on that. That's the, the JIRA integration bit of it. For the, the Angular part, we have a simple service that basically it has a list of the fields. Come on. Is that big enough? Is that actually getting bigger or is it just? Yeah. that has a uh, configuration object that has a list of all the fields and what their IDs are in JIRA. And it takes the uh, data from the uh, form and then translates that into this um, 
object that Jira then expects. So we've got, uh, you can see we've got our summary and issue type appearing because those, those are required fields, so those are always going to be there. And then we have adding a uh, more fields based on this configuration file. And then sending it off to our proxy. So, good? I guess that was a little bit shorter than I thought it might so be. How, how, how well does this work? I mean, is it, is it really hard to call Jira from this Angular thing? Like, uh, the hardest. A lot of code there. So the, the hardest thing really is uh, finding the fields in this big soup that I showed earlier of all the fields in your instance. And that's that's just basically going through and hitting Control F and typing in what it's called in Jira and then finding this ID that I showed here. So every custom field has an ID, something like this one. So you just have to find its number and then you can use that. So it seems like a lot of the complexity is in the shape of the Jira API, not so much in the integration or calling it from Angular. So it's pretty easy by comparison. Yeah. So that's um, once you have this number, it's very easy to just keep uh, adding things. The other uh, kind of difficulty is you'll notice in here I've got this value set up within an array inside an object. And so depending on what the data type is in Jira, it's looking for different uh, forms for the data. But it will kind of guide you through that. If you send it the wrong thing, it will be like, oh, that thing we expect it to be in an array and it's not. So you get pretty good errors from Jira? Right. So that's okay. if you can see uh, if I do, it's like if I delete this. And what is this tool you're using to show us how it works? Uh, this is Postman. So this is just a, uh, something to make custom post re uh, requests to a server. So if I do this, it says, it tells you all the errors that you have in your request. So it says, you know, you have this field that's not right. And it should have said that that thing should have been in an array, but Depending on what you do, you can get yeah. different errors. So then you, you, you basically tinker with it in Postman until you get what you wanted, and then you can go write a little JavaScript code called via Angular that does that, and it works. Like, yeah. Does it work in 10 minutes, or is it like working all day? Uh, it works in about uh, like five minutes per field. Okay. So like if I wanted to, uh, like, let's see. Oh. Yeah, so this is, this is when you, when you ask for the list of fields that you could potentially use. This is what you get back, so you have to kind of like so that's the tough parse that's, through it. So it's that's purely Jira trouble there. Right? Yeah. So, od customer action. So, so it's that is the thing about this particular field type, and then so what I actually did is I actually took this and copied and pasted it into a JSON formatter so that it was easier to look at, and then uh, search through that for the IDs. But this is the documentation shows at the beginning, this is like dealing with the Jira REST API. Right, so this will actually tell you, so if we look here, there should be a uh, field request. Yeah. Yeah, so here we go. So you can see, I, I was looking at it earlier, that uh, it actually will tell you what exactly will happen depending on what you do with this. So you can actually like modify so you can get the list of all fields here. So you've got a reasonable level of introspection you can do against the API itself, even if it's for customers. Yeah. Cool. Do so you have an example app that uses some of the stuff that you've done? I think you said that our, our training yeah. requests. Use so the, the Angular Bootcamp site actually is using this. So we have running live. Um, so this form here. Um, is when it, uh, it collects all this data and then transforms it into that uh, JSON object that I showed earlier and then sends it to the proxy that I also showed earlier. And then that proxy sends it to our JIRA instance, which then creates an item to track this information. So that's my favorite way to use Jira is without Jira in this. <laughs> <laughs> so I think I also heard at some point there's like some sort of difference in how you need to like look at the API based on whether or not like you're you know we're making a request as an auth user or, or not. Uh, you can like make the same calls but get different forms. Yes. So uh, something that we ran into trouble with is if you are 
trying to like if you if you do this call that I did here, but you're logged out of Jira, it will just give you back the list of standard Jira fields. So every it will basically give you back everything that is standard to Jira, but nothing that is custom. So it will look like it, it succeeded, but you won't actually see any of the, your custom fields in here. So, and that's true for basically anything that you're doing. If, um, if you're like using Postman to try and test out your commands and you're logged into Jira, it will actually create the Jira items with your name. And so um, you have to be careful, you know, when you're trying to uh, test that you can when, uh, so the proxy actually creates things anonymously, so you have to set it up so that your uh, Jira project can have issues created by an anonymous user. Uh, so if you're trying to test that that worked, and you're, you, you can't be logged into Jira while you're doing, that, while you're doing this testing. So that's some rough patches that we ran into.